Hi guys, it's Debbie and today I would like to speak about Justice League, the new film set in the DC Extended Universe and directed by Zack Snyder. This film shows Batman, Cyborg, The Flash, Aquaman and Wonder Woman forming the Justice League, an alliance of superheroes with the goal of protecting planet Earth after the events of Batman vs Superman, the previous film. In particular, in this film, the Justice League's main enemy is Steppenwolf, which arrives on Earth followed by his army of parademons on a mission to retrieve and unite the Mother Boxes, units of pure and powerful energy with the intent of destroying all the other communities, Atlanteans, Amazons, humans and so on. Batman recruits his allies and they unite to fight against this vicious enemy while still processing their feelings and the troubled times after the events of Batman vs Superman, which left planet Earth a considerably more grim and hostile environment. Now to put things down honestly, I really really enjoyed Wonder Woman when I saw it a few months ago. I found it thoroughly engaging and both fun and dramatic and although it has its flaws it is wonderfully human and brought some realism to a an obviously unreal world. We really bonded with Diana and cheered her on throughout all of the film. But at the same time, I really, really don't like some of the previous films set in the DC Extended Universe. Skipping over Suicide Squad, which I found unbearable, I consider the recent Batman vs Superman hardly engaging, absolutely chaotic, with a plot that started at simplistic and after a series of big bad explosion became borderline ridiculous. So before watching Justice League, I had the feeling I was going to see something really bad. A terrible continuation of similar collapsing plots. And even if I tried my best to not be influenced by these feelings, in the end, that's just exactly how it turned out to be. Justice League followed along the lines of Suicide Squad and took up about 85% of the running time to introduce the characters, ignoring the main topic and the hero's main goal. Steppenwolf's plan was announced at the beginning of the film, then we left him and we saw him again at the end of the film with only some brief moments in the central portion. And his ideas and the exact point essence of the mother boxes was never fully explained. We just follow along with the explosions and the CGI, knowing that sooner or later he'll be defeated. We're not scared of Steppenwolf, he's just the next big baddie in line. Obviously Justice League is heavily tied to its characters, they are fundamental for the plot, and it has a ton of information to convey, also knowing that most of the audience has little to no previous knowledge about these characters. But the whole film just felt like a talent show in which the various contestants came up on stage one at a time to show how fun and what their superpowers are. The only thing missing here was the colourful name tag that popped up in a Suicide Squad style with the background voice narrating the character's features. So altogether the plot in Justice League was extremely simplistic and ridden with forced puns and lines of dialogue. Even an awesome character like Alfred became unnecessary and annoying. As we could tell there was a ridiculously huge effort being put in place in order to try and make him that clever, um, know-it-all character, an attempt which failed completely. The effects were bad for a budget this high, let's just say that everything was a huge mess. At a certain point I actually had to remind myself, oh wait, who are they actually fighting? Who, who was the enemy? But the answer I got was Batman asking Aquaman if he could actually speak to Fish. But let's take a closer look at these characters to see if all this running time which is dedicated to introducing each of them is actually worth it. Aquaman was brought on screen in the most simple and cringeworthy manner possible. He was introduced with the stereotyped fashionable idea of a huge muscular Nordic hunk which we can all imagine with a hipster woolly jumper flexing his biceps in an ad for a startup raw natural coffee shop. There is no character development when speaking about Aquaman. There is no interest or effort in giving us engaging and useful information about him, in making us bond with him and cheer him on. There, there, is, the, there is the potential. We see that he is the character which is less confident in the Justice League. He is always very uncertain about the choices that are being made. But instead of depicting this interesting in contrast between his huge threatening appearance and his doubtful mind, the film just fell into a nearly embarrassing introduction to the character. I'm not joking when I say this, in one scene Aquaman saves a sailor from a uh, ship sinking in a storm. He brings him to a local pub, orders whiskey or some sort of other alcoholic beverage and then he proceeds to walk out of this pub 
chugging down the bottle in slow motion with this deep rock music playing, his hair blowing in the wind, flexing his muscles while he dives into the ocean. Who needs to know more about him? Who cares about the world of the Atlanteans? I mean, they are muscles. Now moving on to Batman. I am a fan of the Dark Knight trilogy. I find Christian Bale to be nearly the perfect Batman, but at the same time I know other actors will always play other roles. This is how cinema works. But already in Batman vs Superman, I didn't find Ben Affleck's portrayal just different. I found it absolutely terrible. He was a silent, sad, emotionless robot. Batman is a very reserved, dark, brooding character. But we all love him, he's our ultimate hero and he has personality. Ben Affleck's Batman is said was just a silent mannequin moving around on stage, barely conveying any emotion. In Justice League he's slightly improved compared to Batman vs Superman but just because he had many more moments as Bruce Wayne rather than undercover in disguise as Batman, allowing him to actually avoid depicting him. But still he was dull, simple, and if he hadn't been the character that actually recruited all the others, we would have probably considered him the, the most boring character on set. We trusted Bale's Batman, we could feel the hero in him, we, we knew that the situation was under control. Ben Affleck instead felt more like a plastic toy moving around in expensive gadgets. Moving on, I had heard negative reviews about Cyborg, but in the end I wasn't as disappointed as I expected. I found his character quite interesting. After an accident, Cyborg survived near death by having his body incorporated by a bionic structure, which coexists with his limbs and mind. The interesting aspect is that he often has little to no control over this structure and his mind becomes more similar to an autonomous computer, making him often despise his very own nature and abilities. The problem with Cyborg was the special effects department. As I said before, I didn't like them in general in the film and I especially didn't like them with him. The two most interesting characters and the only ones that saved this ship of huge explosions from actually sinking were The Flash and Wonder Woman. The Flash is portrayed by Ezra Miller which is known for depicting characters with an uncommon peculiar personality both in a positive bright sense and in a very negative one. And in Justice League he was this very bright, merry, talkative, friendly, but also shy and somewhat anxious character. And he was one of the few people on set that actually made this film more human, more mundane. One of the main problems with Justice League Batman vs Superman Suicide Squad is that they are exaggerately out of worldly. They are set in a human environment, but they completely ignore it. We found Wonder Woman so engaging also because there was something relatable to it. It was something more human. While still speaking of a nearly immortal goddess with superpowers. So Barry Allen, The Flash, gave us some light-hearted humour which was definitely lacking in this universe. Also when considering the pure acting, Ezra Miller has a lot less experience than big names such as Jason Momoa or Ben Affleck, but he appeared to be the most relaxed and natural character on set. While all the others were busy posing, he incorporated all a series of body gestures and uh, variations in his tone of voice and way of speaking in a manner which made him way more relatable. Now a note to the side, one of the reasons for which the Dark Knight trilogy was so successful was the fact that we completely forgot that the Joker, Bane, the Batman don't exist in our world and never will and we just follow the films as if they were realistic stories in an authentic real world of terror. Moving on back to Justice League, when speaking of Wonder Woman, as I said in my uh, review of her standalone film, at first I wasn't very sure about the choice of Gal Gadot. I feared that beauty had taken over acting but in the end uh, I absolutely loved her. She was charismatic and lovable, but at the same time she always reminded us of the threat, the, how dangerous she could be. Although her character in Justice League was definitely more stiff and structured compared to her performance in Wonder Woman, she still had that natural grace and elegance, which is part of her divine character, which goes way beyond the physical beauty. The thing I don't like about her in Justice League is that we never really see her at her full potential. She felt way less of a threat 
compared to her fighting in Wonder Woman. So in general, unfortunately, neither The Flash nor Diana saved this film from sinking into two hours of an empty plot, during which we just fiddle our thumbs, waiting for the moment in which Steppenwolf will be defeated, because we had no doubts surrounding the outcome of the battle. It was just a matter of when and how the heroes would make it. Let me know what you thought about Justice League with a comment here below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe for more movie related content. Also remember you can still send me your questions to be featured in my upcoming Q&A video. See you soon. Bye.